All right, good afternoon. Today's topic is on constructing a cladogram or a phylogenetic tree. Um, and today's essential question is, how do you construct and analyze a cladogram? So remember when taking notes, it's good to listen first and then you can pause and write down. Um, if you do that, there's um, evidence to support that you will retain that knowledge better. So just keep that method in mind as you are watching and listening and taking notes to this video. So a good thing to remember um, when we are talking about cladograms is cladograms show relatedness among species based on certain traits. And so we're not talking about how fish evolved into a salamander. We're talking about how fish in, in salamanders or amphibians um, show a recent common ancestor and how their traits suggest a recent common ancestor. So that's something to keep in mind as we're going through this video. So what is cladistics? It's a process using shared derived characteristics and traits or traits um, to categorize organisms based on the relatedness and how many traits that they share together. And um, it also shows branching off moments where species populations have branched off and evolved into different um, species. So let's take a look at this uh, cladogram right here. Here we have a cladogram showing the um, evolution of various species and their relatedness of the traits that they have. So at these certain nodes here, you have um, when certain traits arose in evolutionary history. And so as you can see, the closer they are together on a cladogram, the more related they are and the more traits that they share and the more recent common ancestor they have. Um, so this is a more simplified cladogram, but cladograms can include many different traits, many different species, and you can have a very complex cladogram like this one or this one down here. And so when we're reading cladograms, we read and we study clads or clades. A clade is a grouping and it includes a common ancestor and all of its descendants. And so I would draw an example of what a clade is and also what a clade is not. For instance, this one down here is not a clade because this branch over here does not share the most recent common ancestor to this branch over here. And so that is not a correct clade. This, however, is because all of these that have branched off share that recent common ancestor. Clades can be nested in a clade, so clades could be very small or they could be very uh, large and encompass a lot of different species. Um, it all just depends on which group and which characteristic you are studying. So this cladogram right here shows a uh, simplified evolution of the cat family. So all species um, uh, related to cats. And uh, what this phylogeny shows, or this cladogram shows, is uh, how all tetrapods have evolved. So tetrapods are four-limbed species. So let's take a look. Each node represents a last common ancestor of all four-limbed animals. So at this point right here in evolutionary time, species have branched off and since then have evolved different traits. However, the similarity that they have is that they are all four-limbed. They are all tetrapods. And so these nodes and anything after it represent what that organism has. So for instance, at this node right here, specialized shearing teeth, anything after that has that trait. Anything before it does not have that trait. And so the further away they are from each other, the less related they are, the less similarities they have, and so therefore they share a less recent common ancestor. The forks show the order in which various groups branched off over the course of evolutionary time. And so each defined characteristic ref or defines a clade. So right here, um, represents a clade of all species that have hair, or all mammals that have hair. And so this is the mammalia clad. Uh, for instance, this one down here, amniotic egg or egg with membranes, all species beyond that have that trait. And so that defines this clade in or an, or an, amniota. That's always, that's always one that I always mispronounce. Okay. So understanding, uh, this should say cladograms, not phylogenetic trees. We'll talk about what a phylogenetic tree is on Thursday. It's a little bit different. Um, so when you're looking at phylogenetic, or excuse me, cladograms, when you're looking at cladograms, 
um, these certain lineage splits are, splits are called speciation events, and it shows um, when certain species branched off and evolved into different species, but they all share a recent common ancestor. It's important to keep a couple things in mind when you read a cladogram. Um, it, Cladograms are tree-like, not ladder-like, so it's not saying that A evolved into B and then into C and then into D, but rather A, B, C, and D all share a common ancestor, and over time certain natural selection pressures branched off these populations into different species. And also, just because we read them left to right, it doesn't mean that A is less than D and D is the best. That's the incorrect way. It's just showing that A is less related to D than maybe C is because C shares more recent common ancestor. Also, the way you arrange your clades um, uh, can be different, and it doesn't necessarily mean that this one's more correct than this one. So a misconception about humans in cladograms uh, in your textbook or online, you'll see that humans are nestled within a clade. And humans, the misconception is that humans evolved from chimps. That is incorrect. In fact, uh, the more correct way to say it is that we share a recent common ancestor to modern day chimpanzees and bonobos. And so it's incorrect to say we evolved from chimps. It is correct to say that we share a recent common ancestry. And there are certain fossil records that have shown evidence towards these speciation events. So some main, the main ideas from this video. Cladograms sort species out based on relatedness of physical traits, and these little nodes represent when certain, certain characteristics arose and it defines a certain clad. So all branches beyond this one represent a clad that all has claws or nails. Cladograms also show speciation events in when certain characteristics or traits have evolved. So the questions to answer in your notebook, remember there is no Google form, you have to answer them into your notebook. According to this cladogram right here, which derived characteristic or trait do chimps share with salamanders? The number two, you're going to choose the correct words from the sentence. The closer the two species are together in a clade, do they show more or less recent common ancestor, and do they show more or less similar traits? Now remember, you have to show evidence that you have interacted with your notes and that you've gone back and reviewed. So the best, best method to do this, the easiest way to do this is Cornell style, where you come up with two questions and a summary for each page of notes that you took. Um, highlight, do some underlining, show me that you've interacted and you've, you, and you've went back and you've reviewed these notes. I hope you had a good day off for ACT Day. I will see you either Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, thanks for listening.